There isn't a drug out there that can restore declining memory associated with aging, but a new virtual reality video game might be the key to keeping aging brains young. We'll cover all of that and more in this episode of What's New in Games for Health. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Digital.Games, where we explore how games help us grow, connect, and heal. If you believe in the power of games, hit that subscribe button as well as the bell to be alerted of when new videos drop. This video is all about virtual city navigation and games, so comment below with a favorite city or map from an open world game that you always remember, and I'll be sure to respond. A new virtual reality wayfinding video game out of UCSF's Neuroscape Lab called Labyrinth VR had participants navigate through an immersive virtual city to test if the wayfinding exercise could improve long-term memory in adults. What is wayfinding? Well, remember back in your high school science class or your Saturday morning cartoons when you watched a video of a mouse navigating a maze to find a piece of cheese at the end of that maze? The mouse at first struggles to find the cheese, but with every go at the maze gets better and better at navigating that maze. This is called learning and it translates to more activity in neuron real estate in the hippocampus, the area of the brain that is key for memory and that is shrinking in aging adults. But imagine taking an elderly man or woman and putting him or her in that same maze. What effect would we see? Well, that approach probably isn't so ethical and highly dependent on the participants' affinity for cheese products. So researchers out of UCSF had an idea. We want to present you with a learning experience and it actually will be a pretty taxing one. So we're going to drop you into a brand new neighborhood like you just moved in from out of town. You know, you just got your place and you're trying to find your way around and where's the, the post office and the bakery and the butcher and, and your friend's house and the restaurant. We want you to learn where those places are and to be able to navigate to them uh, as efficiently as possible. You know, we all want to walk the fastest, most direct route. We call this wayfinding. So like Peter just so elegantly described, the goal was to develop a realistic and immersive virtual reality spatial wayfinding game to improve and possibly even restore memories in older adults. Rather than a maze, the researchers built a captivating city environment, which participants actually walked around in and explored. Players were given a list of tasks or errands to complete, like going to the grocery store or dry cleaning, and could complete them in whichever order they wanted. As the participants learned the city, they would presumably become more efficient in the routes that they would choose to complete their tasks. At the beginning of this video, I asked you to comment below with your favorite city or map from an open world game. The reason I asked this is because if you have ever played an open world game like an RPG, like Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption, or a classic sprawling Ubisoft adventure, there is a good chance that the concept of learning a virtual world is very familiar to you. The recent game Cyberpunk 2077 by CD Projekt Red comes to mind as a game that, despite a problematic release, was designed with a huge emphasis on its virtual world, Night City, a world that always feels real and lived in. Some games, like the recent Assassin's Creed games or the critically acclaimed Breath of the Wild, even play with some of the more traditional navigation mechanics found in this type of game to make wayfinding a more engaging and immersive experience. So you are not constantly opening up the map to see where in the world you are, but instead are naturally traveling through the world and organically learning the map. If you have played these games before, you know how powerful an immersive virtual world can be. This was the core concept driving the research study of Labyrinth VR. Not only was the spatial wayfinding hypothesized to improve memory, but the immersive virtual environment was specifically designed to always test and exercise long-term memory, and this would hopefully augment the positive effects of wayfinding. What they found was that the immersive virtual environment worked. After the 30-day trials, older adults who played the Labyrinth VR game demonstrated a significant improvement in long-term memory retrieval when compared to those in the placebo group who instead played some narrative adventure games on an iPad that had nothing to do with wayfinding. The Labyrinth VR group even showed an equivalent performance in memory retrieval to younger adults, while the placebo and control groups did not. So what does this all mean? Well, let's review. First of all, until now, there has never been any cognitive intervention 
or pharmaceutical treatment that restores long-term memory capabilities. Labyrinth VR shows potential for a wayfinding game in an immersive virtual reality environment to be used as a brand new digital intervention and maybe even therapeutic for aging and cognition. Future studies from the Neuroscape team aim to focus in on what effect the VR component really had or if participants could have a similar effect by playing the same game on a 2D screen. My guess is that we will see that VR augments the effect, but there is still overall improvement in memory recall on the 2D screen. This is really exciting because whether you are talking about VR or not VR, to me, this is just evidence that there are health benefits to video games. Labyrinth VR could be designed from the ground up as a targeted digital therapeutic to treat cognitive decline from aging or even diseases like Alzheimer's, and that is extremely exciting. But as a gamer and medical professional reading this article, I'm also just saying, yeah, I think this effect is probably happening to some degree just by sitting on the couch and playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla for an hour. Who knows, maybe we are going to see that people who play games on average actually have better memory or maybe less hippocampal degeneration with aging. It's why I love the topic of games for health because we can live on the cutting edge of science and use games to learn more about the human body or to design new treatments and therapies but we also realize that the games we play every day have their own health benefits too. Well, that's what's new in Games for Health. If you want to read more about the study, I have provided the link in the description below. If you like this video, please feel free to like, comment, and share. My favorite part of running this channel is interacting with you. So get in those comments and say hi. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll see you next time on Digital Doc Games.